How did the universe come from nothing? What was there before the Big Bang? And how have our ideas about the universe evolved over time? Why didn't the universe just stay nothing? Why does mathematics exist? Why do quantum fluctuations exist? The story of humanity attempting to answer the question, why does the universe exist? Or even why does existence exist? begins with it just existing and ends in questions such as why do the tools for the universe even exist? Part one, the eternal universe and the seeds of doubt. We begin with infinity. Back in the early 20th century, scientists believed the universe was like your granddaddy's old porch, sturdy, unchanging, and always there. This was the steady state theory which held that the universe had no beginning or end. It was just there. Matter was continuously created to fill the gaps as the universe expanded, keeping everything in a perfect balance. It was a comforting thought, much like knowing that Ma's apple pie would always be waiting on the windowsill. But along came Edwin Hubble, a man with a telescope and a curiosity as vast as the cosmos. He noted in the 1920s that distant galaxies were moving away from us and the farther they were, the faster they seemed to scoot along, like fireflies drifting away into the night. This observation suggested that the universe was expanding, not static. Hubble's discovery shook the foundations of the steady state theory. If the universe was expanding, perhaps it had a starting point, a moment of creation. This realization reignited the age old question. If the universe had a beginning, what sparked it into existence? The idea that the universe was an eternal opened the door to new possibilities and deeper mysteries. Part two, the Big Bang. Enter George LeMay, a Belgian priest and physicist who proposed a revolutionary idea in 1927. He suggested that the universe began as a single, incredibly dense point, what he called the primeval atom. Imagine compressing all the stars, planets, and galaxies into an infinitesimally small point. Not everyone was keen on this idea. Fred Hoyle, a staunch supporter of the steady state theory, mockingly referred to LeMay's proposal as the Big Bang during a 1949 radio broadcast. He intended it as a jab, but the name's becoming the term we use today. The Big Bang Theory suggested a specific moment of creation, but it also deepened the mystery what caused the Big Bang. If everything sprang from this primeval atom, where did that atom come from? Part 3, the Cosmic Microwave Background. Echoes of the Beginning. In 1964, two radio astronomers, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, were fiddling with a giant antenna trying to eliminate all sources of interference. No matter what they did, they couldn't get rid of a persistent hiss that they kept hearing. This mysterious noise actually turned out to be the cosmic microwave background radiation, the afterglow of the Big Bang. The discovery of the cosmic microwave background radiation provided concrete evidence that the universe had a beginning. It was like finding an old photograph that proves a long-told family story was true all along. Yet while it confirmed the Big Bang, it didn't explain why it happened. The cosmic hiss was a clue, but the ultimate origin remained elusive. Part 4. The Quantum Realm. Where nothing is something. Venturing into the microscopic world, physicists discovered that nothing isn't as empty as it seems. In the quantum realm, particles flicker into and out of existence like fireflies on a warm summer evening. These quantum fluctuations mean that even a perfect vacuum is teeming with activity. Physicists like Stephen Hawking and Lawrence Cross proposed that the universe could have arisen from a quantum fluctuation. <laughs> Imagine a calm pond where, without any disturbance, ripples suddenly appear. Could the universe be a colossal ripple in the fabric of space-time? The idea suggests that the universe could emerge from nothing, but it leads us to ponder, 
why do the laws of quantum mechanics exist then? If these laws allow for the universe to pop into being, what's the origin of these laws? It's like someone giving you a toolbox, but not explaining why that toolbox exists in the first place. We're peeling back layers of the cosmic onion, but the core question still remains. Why is there something rather than nothing? Part five, the multiverse, infinite realities and endless possibilities. In the early 1980s, physicist Alan Guth introduced the concept of inflation theory. He suggested that a fraction of a second after the Big Bang, the universe just expanded exponentially. This sudden growth spurt smoothed out the wrinkles in the cosmic fabric, explaining why the universe looks the same in all directions. Building on Guth's work, physicist Andre Lendy introduced the concept of eternal inflation, proposing that inflation never completely stops. Instead, it continues in different regions, creating a vast multiverse of bubble universes. Each bubble could have its own laws of physics. The multiverse theory expands our perspective, suggesting that our universe is just one of countless others, or it could mean that we're part of some other universe that we spawn from, but it also magnifies the mystery, why does the multiverse exist? It's like realizing our hometown is part of an infinite landscape. We've answered one question, but uncovered an even grander one. Part six, string theory and brain worlds. Weaving new dimensions. In physics, string theory is an approach that suggests that the smallest components of the universe are not particles like electrons or quarks, but rather extremely tiny vibrating strings of energy. These strings can vibrate at different frequencies and each frequency corresponds to a different type of particle. Think of it like a guitar string where different notes, vibrations produce different sounds. In string theory, different vibrations of these fundamental strings produce the various particles that make up matter and forces in the universe. For string theory to work consistently, it requires more than the familiar three dimensions of space, length, width, and height and one of time. The theory suggests the existence of additional dimensions, which could be curled up in shapes so small that we don't notice them in our everyday lives. These extra dimensions provide the room for the strings to vibrate in different ways, allowing string theory to explain various physical phenomena. And from this, in some versions of string theory, the universe we experience is described as a three-dimensional brain short for membrane, existing within a higher dimensional space. Imagine our universe is like a two-dimensional sheet of paper floating in a larger, higher dimensional space, like a pond. There could be other brains floating nearby, each representing a different universe. These universes might be close in higher dimensional sense, but completely separate from our perception. While this model offers intriguing possibilities for the universe's origin, it pushes the question even further back. What created the higher dimensional space and the brains? It's like tracing your family tree only to find more branches and roots, each leading to new questions about your ancestry. Part seven, <laughs> cyclic universes and the endless loop. Physicists Paul Steinhardt and Neil Turok proposed a model where the universe undergoes endless cycles of expansion and contraction. In this cyclic universe model, the Big Bang isn't the beginning, but a transition point between a previous universe's collapse and our universe's expansion. The cyclic model eliminates the need for a singular beginning, suggesting the universe has been in an eternal infinite loop, yet it doesn't explain why this cycle exists. Part eight dark energy and an accelerating universe. In the late 1990s, astronomers like Saul Perlmutter, Brian Schmidt, and Adam Race discovered that the universe's expansion is accelerating. A mysterious force called dark energy seems to be pushing galaxies apart at an ever-increasing rate, like an invisible hand stretching the cosmic fabric. If this acceleration continues, it could lead to a dramatic end where galaxies, stars, 
and even atoms are torn apart, a fate known as the Big Rip. It's a startling possibility that adds urgency to our quest to understand the universe, and dark energy adds yet another layer to the cosmic mystery. What is this force and why does it exist? While we can measure its effects, its origin remains unknown. It reminds us that even as we uncover new aspects of the universe, the fundamental question of existence persists. And if the universe rips apart at the very end, then what happens after that? Part nine, the mathematical universe. Physicist Max Tegmark proposed that the universe is not just described by mathematics, it is mathematics, according to his mathematical universe hypothesis. All mathematical structures exist physically and our universe is one such structure. This idea shifts the question to a new realm. Why do mathematical structures exist? If mathematics is the foundations of reality, we're left pondering the existence of mathematics itself. Part 10, the present day and what's coming. So today, scientists are just pushing the boundaries of knowledge with experiments at facilities like CERN, where particles are smashed together to reveal fundamental truths, maybe see if they make new universes or, or, or who knows what. The quest to unify general relativity, which describes large scale structure of the universe, with quantum mechanics, which governs the very small, continues. Theories like loop quantum gravity aim to bridge this gap, seeking a deeper understanding of space-time itself. These cutting-edge explorations bring us closer to uncovering the mechanisms of the universe's birth and evolution, yet each discovery often just leads us to new questions. As we delve deeper, we circle back to the profound question, why is there something rather than nothing? The pursuit itself becomes a testament to <laughs> the pursuit. It's, I mean, I, why is there something rather than nothing? After journeying through the annals of scientific thought and discovery, we're left with a humbling realization. Despite all we've learned, once again, the question, why does the universe exist, remains. The universe either randomly started because something else existed, including laws of nature, which only pushes the question back further. The universe is just infinite, or cyclically infinite, or is part of an infinite amount of multiverses, or whatnot. Each theory and discovery, be it the Big Bang, cosmic inflation, quantum fluctuations, or the multiverse, offers kind of a piece of the puzzle. They help us understand how the universe might have come into being, but the why remains just beyond our grasp. Any scenario where something created the universe only pushes back the question, what created that something? There was one very interesting idea from the holy works of Pythagoras, a book the Pythagoreans wrote whereby they declare existence exists due to what they called the sameness and the difference. The fact that those two things exist is what causes existence. <laughs> then again, perhaps the beauty lies in the journey itself.